Okay, I have the, uh, the time at a couple minutes past 8.30, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. So first of all, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm James Constable from Vertical Measures, and I'm here hosting today's Vertical Measures monthly webinar series. Today's webinar is titled Google Analytics and Conversions, and our speaker today is Director of Search Marketing, Chris Von Nieder. Before introducing Chris and starting the presentation, please allow me to take care of a little bit of housekeeping information. Uh, firstly, for those who don't know, Vertical Measures is an internet marketing company located in Phoenix, Arizona, offering link building services, SEO, content marketing, and social media engagement for businesses of varying sizes. Vertical Measures provides marketing expertise to businesses, universities, and agencies worldwide. Today's webinar will be available for replay later this afternoon and will be accessing and will be accessible sorry, via the webinar page on verticalmeasures.com slash webinar. We'll also be posting a link to the recording on Twitter. If you would like to follow us there, we are at Vertical Measure. Um, we'll, we'll also be happy to answer any of your questions during the presentation, so please make sure to ask them either in the chat box on your screen uh, or via uh, Twitter using the hashtag VMWebinar, and I will ask them to Chris either during the presentation or at the end dur during our Q&A session. Finally, if you can hear me but you can't see the slides, please attempt to reconnect, and it should then work cor correctly. So now I think we're, we're all set to begin, so I'm happy to introduce Chris Bonita from Vertical Measures. Uh, thanks, James. Uh, good morning, and welcome, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to join us this morning. Uh, so our, we're hoping to keep the webinar right around uh, 30 to 45 minutes this morning, probably be a little closer to 45 minutes. But I'll move it along uh, just as quickly as I can. But of course, the goal is to get some good information out there to everyone and, and hopefully for you to uh, uh, learn a little bit more about analytics and, and get more traffic and conversions to your website. So just a couple little things before we get started. As James said, our Twitter account is at Vertical Measure. And of course, our preference would have been that it's uh, at Vertical Measures, but apparently Twitter doesn't allow enough characters for us to have uh, obtained the, the full name. <laughs> um, and as James also mentioned, the hashtag for today's webinar, if you're using Twitter, <coughs> excuse me, is pound VM webinar. Uh, so feel free to submit any questions you may have uh, through Twitter. And I do believe James is monitoring that as well. Um, and he'll pass along any questions to me. So. Um, Again, today's webinar is Google Analytics and Conversions. We're going to talk mainly about Google Analytics, and then at the very end, we're going to touch on a little bit of Google's website optimizer product, and I'll just tell you a little bit about that as well. So why don't we jump in and get started? We've got a lot to cover. Okay, so who is this webinar for? Today's webinar is geared towards the beginner or intermediate uh, Google Analytics user. Uh, we're not going to get into any um, PPC or AdWords related analytic information. Um, we're just going to stick to primarily your your um, organic re organic search results. Um, and we we possibly will be doing another women webinar in the future for those of you um, that may be more so at the expert level in your analytics knowledge. So uh, you may want to go to our blog and, and register there so you'll receive notification should we uh, have a expert level analytics class at a later date. So if you don't already have any analytics experience, I'm very confident you're going to get a lot out of this webinar today. Uh, if you've got some experience, um, you know, if you already have a website uh, set up with Google Analytics um, and you've been working with Google Analytics a little bit, uh, I'm still very confident that by the end of this webinar, um, you're going to walk away with some uh, valuable concepts and information that you can start applying right away. And of course, if you do already have, have an analytics account, you can certainly uh, uh, log into it and try and follow along um, as we run through the webinar today. So let's talk about what we're going to cover. Uh, we're going to quickly uh, go through the process of installing Google Analytics, and I won't spend too much time there. Um, and then we're going to uh, go over the dashboard, talk a little bit about the dashboard, which is the first screen you see typically after you log into your analytics account, and uh, also how to customize the dashboard. 
We're going to talk about a somewhat new feature in Google Analytics called Intelligence, where you can actually set up alerts um, that will notify you when important activity occurs, uh, either with your website or within your analytics account. We're going to talk about visitor, of course, the who, when, and why, traffic sources, talk about where traffic's coming from, help you understand where traffic's coming from and why. Um, we're going to talk about content, what are the best pages, worst pages on your website, navigation analysis. Navigation analysis is basically the path that your visitors are going to take, uh, or the path that your visitors take through your website. And we're going to talk about how to learn, uh, how to understand what path they're actually taking. And just as importantly, we'll be uh, talking a little bit about paths to conversions, because of course in many cases, the primary goal of your website is conversions, or basically to somehow, um, uh, you know, if you're selling a product, of course a conversion is, uh, you know, selling that product, a conversion could also be considered down, uh, a download of a white paper or uh, just getting an email address in your blog. So we'll talk about conversions, of course. We're going to talk a little bit about site search, what it is and how it's beneficial. Uh, and then goals. Goals is Google Analytics version of conversion. So basically when you're in your analytics account, uh, if, you wanna, if you're tracking your conversions, Google Analytics actually calls it goals. And then as I mentioned, we're going to touch on Google Website Optimizer a little bit right at the very end. And we'll talk about how you can use that system to do some additional uh, testing on your website and conversion improvements. So Google Analytics, what is it and why do you need it? It's a free enterprise class web, web analytics solution. Uh, it gives you insights into your website traffic and marketing effectiveness. Uh, and basically Google Analytics just makes it very easy to see, analyze, and understand the traffic data from your website. And once you have a good understanding of your analytics, you can use it to strengthen your marketing initi initiatives. Um, ultimately, you're going to be increasing your traffic and increasing your conversions by uh, basically by just learning your way around Google Analytics and getting to know and getting to understand the information uh, that it contains. So installing Google Analytics, uh, if you don't already have one, you're going to need a, a Google account, which you can get at google.com slash accounts. Um, if you already have your Google account, then you can just go to google.com slash analytics and either sign up or, or log into your analytics account at that point. And then as you can see on the slide there, there's just uh, the first screen that you see when you're actually signing up for an analytics account. They're going to ask you for the website URL. Uh, the account name, which typically the account name would just be a friendly name you're going to want to use for your website, time zone, and country and territory. And so then you just go ahead and click the continue button and follow on through. There's a couple of little steps you have to complete in order to sign up, but uh, it's very quick and easy to sign up. Then the next step for installing Google Analytics and, and uh, activating it, basically getting the data to flow to the analytics system, is you need to install the tracking code. And so there's a sample of what the typical Google Analytics tracking code looks like. And it's extremely important that you uh, make sure that the tracking code gets installed on every page of your website. And it needs to be installed in the correct location in the HTML. And Google recommends that you put the uh, tracking code just above the body closing tag um, in the HTML there. And I have actually seen information out there um, and in the, a seminar that I went to on Google Analytics that suggests that it may actually be beneficial to put it in the head section of your HTML versus where Google suggests, which is just above the body closing tag. Um, so it's really up to you, but one of the cases that, that uh, gets made as far as putting it at the bottom of the HTML like Google suggests is if it's in the head section uh, of your page and if for some reason there's a problem with Google Analytics, as if you know Google ever goes down, we all know that, <laughs> but if there is some type of problem with Google Analytics, um, if for whatever reason uh, the tracking code is not working because there's an issue with Google Analytics, it would prevent your page from loading or it could prevent your page from loading. So 
So there is a case to be made to just do it the way Google says, which is put it just above the body closing tag um, at the bottom of your HTML. Now, if you have a CMS, um, a content management system like WordPress or Drupal or one of those, well, they make it very easy for you to, um, to make site-wide changes. So, for example, let's say you've got a WordPress site. You can just log into your, your uh, WordPress back end, go to your, um, uh, go to your uh, appearance section, and then your editor, code editor, and there you'll find a footer file, or typically there's going to be a footer file. And you can just go ahead and open up your footer file and add the tracking code in the footer file just above the body closing tag. Save it, and that's it. Um, Google Analytics tracking code is populated throughout the entire site. And most CMSs are set up the same way. If you uh, have a website that just has all standalone files, well, then unfortunately you're going to have to uh, copy and paste the tracking code in every uh, every page of your website. So hopefully if that's you, you don't have too many pages uh, that you're going to have to do that in. All right, so after you log into Google Analytics, you're going to be looking at your dashboard. There's a, a, a screenshot of what the typical dashboard looks like. Uh, it's blurred out, of course, to protect the privacy of the information that's on there. But basically, the dashboard gives you a quick visualization of statistics that you feel are important, uh, important to your business. Um, and I had mentioned earlier that the dashboard is completely customizable, so we are going to talk about how to customize it. Um, but really, the dashboard is just a quick snapshot of all the information you want to see uh, quickly after you log into Google Analytics. All right, customizing your dashboard. So as you move around um, throughout Google Analytics, you're going to see that little gray bar typically at the top of the screen. And so any reports that you feel are important, and again, um, what's important to your business may be different than what's important to somebody else's business. So, uh, so you really have to kind of decide for yourself what information you feel is important. But as you're moving around Google Analytics, uh, if you find a particular report that you feel is important or valuable, you can just go ahead and click that little button. And Google Analytics will just add that report to your dashboard. But the nice thing is, is it doesn't take you off the current page you're on, so you've got to go back to wherever you were. It'll just pop it on there. And the next time you go to your dashboard, uh, you'll be able to see it there. Reporting dates. So at the top uh, of each screen of Google Analytics, um, you're going to see the you're going to see the reporting date, or basically the period that Google Analytics is displaying uh, data to you. And that's the graphic on the right. Um, so as you can see there, it says April 7, 2010, to May 7, 2010. And that's again, that's the data that's being displayed to you currently in Google Analytics. And if you want to change that date, if you want to either increase the reporting period or decrease it, you can just go ahead, click that date, um, and then the graphic on the left will pop up, and you'll have the option to customize the date range. So the top box is, is minimally the one that you would be working with by default. So there you can just select your starting date and your end date. And then if you actually want to compare uh, data from two separate periods, then you can go ahead and click the compare to past checkbox there, and then the second set of boxes will open up, and you can go ahead and put in uh, some new dates there uh, that you'd like to go ahead and compare to the previous dates. Now, Google Analytics will actually fill those dates in for you automatically by default. So let's say in your first date range, you've got a 30-day period, uh, May 7th to, to, I'm sorry, April 7th to May 7th. Um, they, once you check that compare to past box, uh, Google will just go ahead and fill in the second set for you and automatically uh, make it the prior 30-day range. So it's pretty quick and easy. And a little later, we are going to talk about um, how important uh, trends are when you're looking at Google Analytics. So um, a great way to look at trends would be to do a 90-day range where you're comparing current 90 days to previous 90 days and, and look at your statistics there. So uh, we'll be covering that a little bit later on. Google Analytics also offers a feature 
to export the data, the, um, the, the analytics data that it collects. So let's say, for example, you need a quick Excel spreadsheet either for yourself or, you know, for your boss or, you know, for your partner, you know, another third party. Uh, you can go ahead and click the Export tab, which is also at the very top left of the screen throughout Google Analytics. And you can quickly and easily uh, create an Excel spreadsheet, which the Excel spreadsheet is not, it has very limited formatting. Um, there's no color, there's no fancy graphics or anything. It's pretty much just the data. Now, if you want something a little more colorful, uh, something you could use in a presentation, you're going to want to go with the PDF option. That typically will have the data in a nicely formatted uh, view as well as charts and graphs also. And if you just want the hard data to import into, say, a database or another system, you can export to a CSV file or, or uh, an XML or TSV file. You can also set up Google Analytics to email reports, um, which you can, you can email a report on the fly if you want. Just go to the email tab there, and you can, uh, you can email out a report either to yourself or to uh, third parties as well as needed. But one of the nice things about analytics is you can also set up a schedule of emails so that, uh, let's say, either you or someone else wants a report delivered in their inbox on a regular basis, you can go ahead and set that up in email, and Google Analytics will automatically uh, email out a report based on whatever report you choose and the interval that you decide that report should be emailed out to someone. All right, so we had talked about customizing the dashboard, and I've got some suggestions here on uh, reports that I think are important that you would want to consider adding to your dashboard. And again, I will say that uh, every business is different, so you really have to decide uh, what reports you feel are most important for your particular business objectives. But these are some of the ones that I feel are important. So starting with the first one, uh, we all know and love Google. We all probably get a lot of our traffic from Google. So uh, first and foremost, most go to the search engine section in the main navigation uh, on the left side of Google Analytics. Find Google and go ahead and add that report to your uh, dashboard. New versus returning. So basically what that is is that's traffic that comes to your website either for the first time or, uh, or if you have a, a website that, let's say, for example, has a forum or has some type of user interactivity features, you may have returning visitors. And the reason I recommend keeping an eye on that report is because depending on your business objectives, your goal may be uh, that, or you may find that your new visitors versus returning visitors are your best target for conversions on your website. Or you may find that returning visitors are the best target for conversions on your website. So that's information you're going to want to pay attention to, again, just based on your own personal um, business objectives. Next is the All Traffic Sources Report. So um, that's a great report. Basically, it just gives you a quick snapshot of the top five uh, sources of traffic to your website. And by sources, that could be, uh, you know, search engine traffic through just various keywords and and organic search results. It could be, um, you know, let's say, for example, you're, you've are you got a Facebook page and you're getting traffic from Facebook. It could be, you know, anything you want, any search engines, anywhere where you're getting traffic. And the default view for all these reports is the first five statistics. Um, that's what you're going to be able to see on your dashboard, but uh, you can click through and actually go to the detailed report if you want to look at more data. Next, I recommend you include the keyword report on your dashboard. Uh, in most cases, keyword-driven traffic is critical to your success, and you're going to want to see what keywords are driving traffic to your website. Also, campaigns, if, you're, if you have some type of uh, online marketing initiatives, initiatives occurring out there, uh, online campaigns are going to give you detailed data as far as uh, where you're getting your, your uh, how successful your campaigns are, uh, what source uh, their, your traffic is coming from, the medium, uh, and so forth. So very, very valuable data there. But campaigns can be a little tricky to set up, um, so that's something we'll probably explore in detail at a later time. 
top landing pages. So your landing pages are the pages on your website that get the most traffic uh, from, from third-party sites. So uh, basically it's just how it sounds. These are pages that your visitors land on when they come to your website. That doesn't necessarily mean it's your home page. Could be you know any pages on your site, but you're going to want to pay attention to uh, the pages that get the most traffic. Site search. Uh, I love site search. It's something we're going to cover in, in detail a little further along in the webinar. But site search is uh, basically what it is: is if you have a search box on your website and you have properly configured Google Analytics to track site search, you're going to get a lot of very valuable information as far as uh, content or information that your visitors are looking for on your website and potentially are not finding or they're finding it but it's difficult to find it so that can be very valuable information on how to improve your website another report I recommend is site uh, I'm sorry I already said site search uh, another report is goals which as I mentioned earlier goals is um, is how you track your conversions on your website Oh, and lastly, um, throughout Google Analytics, you are going to see those little drop-down menus where I have, uh, where I'm pointing it out to you. There, watch for these and use them to drill down. At first, when you start working with Google Analytics, you may not even notice those little drop-down menus, but it's extremely important for you to get familiar with them because uh, they give you the ability to drill down a little deeper in your data. You can get a lot of valuable information there. Google Analytics has a somewhat new feature called Intelligence. Uh, it's a great addition. And basically the way it works is you can actually set up custom alerts to notify you or notify someone when, um, when there are important activities that occur uh, on your, basically within your, your website and your Google, Google Analytics. So let's say, for example, your traffic suddenly increases um, you're going to want to know that because you, you may be doing something to uh, drive traffic to your website that is working amazingly well. And of course, if that's the case, you're going to want to continue doing it. But if you don't realize that what you're doing is working well, or if you don't realize that what you're doing is not working well, well, then you can't modify your game plan. So uh, you can set up custom alerts to pay attention to sudden increases in traffic, uh, if keywords are doing well, um, you know, if a particular page is getting a lot more traffic suddenly, these are all things that you can set up custom alerts for. And it makes it nice because you don't have to log into your Google Analytics account um, as often to, uh, you know, to pay attention to these important events. All right, so let's talk about visitors. Um, visitors are tracked by a cookie. And the cookie has a two-year life. So why is that important for you to know? Um, if a visitor visits, visits your site, they get tracked as a unique visitor through Google Analytics. And they will remain unique, or basically they, re they will not be counted a second time um, for a period of up to two years. Unless, of course, they clear out their cookies, uh, you know, cookies in history in their, in their browser, then they could potentially be counted again. Um, but that's a common question that comes up as far as how, how Google Analytics um, knows who's who, basically. So getting into uh, the, the visitors section, uh, you can see on the slide there um, a screenshot of the menu, the, the navigation menu. So when you hear me refer to the main navigation on the left, this is typically what I'm going to be referring to. And so we're in the visitor section, and one of the reports I like to look at is the uh, map overlay. And when you first click on the map overlay, it doesn't really look very impressive. You don't really see that much information. What you got to do is you got to click through. You got to drill down, um, and you can look at very, you know, very important and helpful information, like for example, what countries uh, and what cities and states you're getting traffic from, um, and. With many sites, they are geographically targeted, um, you know, where the business is geographically targeted. So uh, by clicking through and looking at that data, you can see um, geographically where you're more popular and potentially modify or optimize your site to be more effective for those geographic areas. 
So for example, if you're trying to attract visitors from California, and you can see you're getting a lot of traffic from California, but you don't have a page that speaks specifically to uh, your California visitors, you're probably losing out on opportunities. So that's a great place to get that kind of information. We talked a little bit about uh, new and returning visitors. Um, so again, that's important for you to know. It depends on your, on your business goals as far as which one you want to focus on. But what you do want to know in regards to your, your new versus your returning visitors is which convert better. And you have to have goals set up um, to be able to tell which one converts better. But if you do have a goal set up, typically you're going to go ahead and you're going to see that gray tab down there um, throughout Google Analytics where it will say, for example, goal set one or goal set two. And you can go ahead and click through to that tab and that will show you all the conversion information for the particular report that you're on. So you may be on the visitor report or a landing page report or keyword report and it will show you conversion information for that data. So um, good stuff. Definitely something, definitely something you want to pay attention to. Okay, so study the data. Um, there's tons and tons of very valuable and uh, detailed data in your analytics report. But if you just open it up and you kind of glance through it from time to time, you're not really getting the benefit, and you're probably not really um, you're not really improving your web presence by taking that approach. It's important you really get to know the data and study it um, and learn your way around. So let's couple up cover a couple more important metrics you want to pay attention to. Bounce rate is the percentage of one page visits. So basically it bounces someone that comes on your site um, and immediately leaves from the same page that they arrived at. So uh, a high bounce rate typically is going to be bad. There are some cases where you can expect a high bounce rate, but, but you want to keep your bounce rate as low as possible. Um, most likely, your goal is to not have your visitor hit one page and then leave the site. You're probably hoping they were going to uh, move on to somewhere else. So you want to pay attention to your bounce rate. Visitor loyalty shows visually how many times a visitor has visited your site. That's a mouthful. It's a lot of visits. <laughs> anyway, um, so what that's showing you is if the same visitor is coming back to your website more than once. It's tracking that for you and showing you, for example, how many have been to your site uh, one time, how many have been five times, how many have been ten times. And you can use that information to um, really to figure out uh, which of those types of visitors tend to convert better. Or really what you'd want to look at is for the visitors that are coming back more often, what pages are they going to? What are they doing? What are they looking at? Um, and how can you potentially convert them? And also time on site. So um, how long your visitors spend on your site is good information. Long visits um, typically will indicate an engaged visitor. That's what you want. That's what you like. So you really want to pay attention to uh, long visits and see, um, see where those visitors are going, what pages they landed on, and what path they took through your site. And of course, the goal is once you know that information to improve that path, improve the pages that you find your visitors are spending the most time on to hopefully increase your conversion rate. OK, it's all about trends. Um, so as you're studying your Google Analytics data, um, it's important for you to establish a method to quickly and easily identify trends. So you may find that um, a spreadsheet works best for you, or Google Docs, or you know, pen and paper, however you want to work it. But, but the, the way to get the most out of Google Analytics is to look for trends, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. The menu that's on the uh, that's on the slide there, that's on the screenshot, make that menu your friend. When I first started working with Google Analytics, I didn't even notice it there. So initially, I wasn't impressed with analytics because I thought 
I, I was just expecting to see a lot more data and have a lot more control of, of what I'm able to see. So you'll see that menu throughout Google Analytics, and you want to um, get used to using it, pay attention to it, because you can see valuable information like the source of traffic or the source uh, of, of keywords uh, driving traffic to the site. Uh, medium and campaign, of course, is for your campaigns that you're running online. Um, keyword, that's critical. You're going to want to pay attention to your, your keywords driving traffic to your site. And the other one I tend to look at most often is landing page. Um, I like to know what kind of pages are doing well on a website. And there's other options there as well. As you can see, you can explore those uh, when you have more time, like language, uh, continent, um, visitor type. Visitor type is your new versus returning. Um, so study the keywords that are generating the, the most traffic. Identify the ones that have the highest conversion rate and the lowest bounce rate. And you're going to want to optimize your website for those. And by optimize, make sure that your keyword strategy matches your website content strategy. Keywords that are driving traffic to your website um, should also be found on the pages and the title tags and so forth uh, of, the, of the pages on your website. So let's talk a little bit more about keywords or getting a little into a little more detail on the keywords. So as you can see on the screenshot there, uh, we've got a couple of keywords there. We've got Piano Street, which is right over here. And we've got Piano Sheet Music. Those are the keywords. And then we've got some traffic data there about those keywords. So just a couple quick things I want to point out. This is a little tough to see, but right up here at the top throughout Google Analytics, you can filter data based on paid and non-paid um, traffic. So paid, of course, would be your PPC AdWords type traffic, and then non-paid is your, uh, you know, your non-PPC, your your uh, your organic search engine results and so forth, and and basically just traffic that's coming to to your website um, that is not ad generated. And you can see some other good information here, like visits, pa pages per visit, which is the average number of pages each visitor uh, looked at when they were on your site, average time on the site. Again, you're looking for typically more time on the site is better. So you can see a big difference between piano street and uh, piano sheet music, six minutes versus one. Um, you're looking at your bounce rate. So for example, in this case, you've got a 32.48% bounce rate for Piano Street and 53.27% bounce rate for Piano Sheet Music. And so you can see that this keyword has a low time on site and it's got a higher bounce rate versus a high time on site and a lower bounce rate. So this seems to be a better keyword for this particular website, something that they would want to go ahead and focus in on. Also. Be sure to pay attention to these colored numbers up here. You'll see the red and the green. If you look closely, you can see that Google is keeping track of the site average for each one of these metrics. So you can see the average here is 3 minutes 10 seconds. Currently, it's 2.27, so it's down 22.71%. Of course, green typically is good unless it's your bounce rate, so you'll want to pay attention to those. And one other little thing I want to point out, all the way throughout analytics, you'll see these little question marks. And they're pretty pretty hard to see at times. So I just wanted to point out that those are there. And if you click those, you'll get a little pop-up that will explain that particular metric to you. It uh, can, can be real helpful. All right, so when we first started out, we looked at um, the reporting date. And I mentioned that. Uh, you're going to want to compare two different periods of time to identify trends. So, uh, so here you can see an example of of doing that and how the data is going to be displayed to you. So again, you'd want to click that compare to past checkbox up at the date um, date selector. And in this particular case, I set up a 90-day um, comparison, which is the current 90-day period to the previous 90-day period and you're able to see some good information there. So um, from March 8th to April 7th, um, the keyword Beethoven Piano received 152 visits. And from the period of April 8th to May 8th, I'm sorry, this is a 30-day period, and I have 90 days on the slide. I apologize for that. This is a 30-day period here. So you can see that for this 30-day period, 
um, for the keyword Beethoven piano, this website had an increase in visits of 28.29%, uh, which from one month to the next, that's pretty res respectable. And so you can go look through your keyword list and you'll be able to see this type of data and see what, tra what keywords are trending up, which ones are trending down, um, you know, and make, de make decisions about your business based on that information. And again, you're looking at your bounce rate, you're looking at pages per visit, average time on site, um, you're, you're looking for the lowest, the keywords that have the lowest bounce rates um, and typically the highest amount of time on site. So content, I like this graphic because your goal for your content on your website, and content can be pages, uh, you know, HTML pages, it can be uh, videos, it can, it can be, you know, whatever you want, graphics on your website, downloads, PDFs, whatever. But I like this graphic because it makes it very clear that there's a correct path through the maze in order to get to the other side. And your goal for your website should be, if at all possible, to control the user experience and and move them through your site uh, to the goal that you want them to arrive at. And so content is all about the process of controlling that experience and hopefully moving them through the site the way that you want them to uh, move. So what kind of questions do you want to ask yourself about the content on your website? You're going to want to know what pages get the most traffic. Uh, which pages have the, uh, what's the bounce rate of those pages, um, higher or lower? Uh, what pages typically lead to a conversion? Very important piece of information there. Um, you know, what's the last page people are on before they actually buy what you're selling or click through to what you consider a goal? Um, what are the best landing pages? Um, what pages have the highest exit rate? So basically, uh, what pages do more visitors leave from than other pages. That's information you want to have. If, if your exit rate is high for a particular page, uh, well, then that means there must be something wrong with the page or the message that's being delivered. So you'll want to study your pages that have the highest exit rates and, um, and, and learn what seems to be not working on that page. And there's a couple of ways uh, that you're going to be able to do that. Uh, there's third-party tools like Clicktail, for example, where you can actually watch videos of people moving through your website. Um, and there's other ways to do that as well. And one of the ways um, we're going to be talking about, again, towards the end, is the website optimizer where you can test different content on your website. So also, uh, does your content match your keyword strategy? So if you're out there optimizing um, or you're doing search engine optimization for particular keywords, people click through expecting to see something related to the keyword that they clicked on uh, and they don't see that, that's going to increase your bounce rate and uh, turn off your visitors. They're going to they're, they're gonna leave the site if they don't find what they thought they were going to see when they came to the site. So how do you get the answers to those questions? Uh, a lot of it is pretty simple and straightforward, so we're not going to get into it in detail. But you can see from the navigation menu there, uh, Analytics has some great reports like top content, what content on your website um, you know, gets the most traffic, for example, and, and has the highest percentage of visitors that stay on that content. Content by title just basically shows your content by the title tag of the page. Uh, content drill down, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, top landing pages. They're, all those reports there are very helpful and that's it. typically you can get a lot of those questions answered just by clicking through and looking at those reports. One thing you want to keep in mind is if you're looking at the time on page for particular pages on your website, um, does it coincide with the goals of the page? So an, an example of that would be, let's say, you know, we've all seen them, those really long sales letters where you see an interesting ad, you click on it, and you're looking at probably a six or seven page sales letter that includes, you know, why you should buy my widget and all the testimonials and graphics and all the people saying how great it is. So if that's what you have on your website, it's six or seven pages long, typically you would expect to see a long uh, time on page for a sales letter like that. And if you're seeing a short time on page, well, then that means you're, you're losing your visitors partway through the message. So you'd want to work to refine your message 
to hopefully get them to the very bottom, which is probably where they're going to click something that results in a conversion. But let's say your website is a blog. Um, and you, you've got blog posts. Well, a lot of times your visitors are going to come, they're going to read a blog post and um, probably transition off the site after they read that post. So that's typically, typically going to be a shorter, uh, shorter, shorter time on page. And I'm going to step up the pace a little bit just to make sure we get through this so that we've got some time to answer questions at the end because it looks like I'm running a little bit behind. So navigational paths. Navigational paths are the paths that your visitors take through their website, uh, through your website. And again, you're going to see another little drop-down menu there that will give you some very valuable information about the path that your visitors take through your website. Navigational summary, entrance paths, entrance sources, uh, entrance paths. It's all great, great information you're going to want to take a look at and make decisions about your content um, it, you know, based on seeing what pages your visitors are viewing and in what order on your website. At the bottom of Google Analytics, you have the ability to filter data. So for example, let's say you want to uh, find a particular keyword and see how that keyword is performing for you. Just go ahead and plug in the keyword there in the filter, hit go and you'll be able to find that. And I've seen some Google Ana Analytics accounts where the website has tens of thousands of keywords they're ranking for uh, or they're uh, actually receiving traffic from. So filtering can be very useful if you've got a large site with a lot of content and a lot of keywords. And you can also use filtering for finding particular content pages as well if you want to see how those pages are performing. Looks like we advanced a slide here. So let's talk a little bit about site search. I had mentioned early on that site search is one of my favorite features of analytics and very valuable. Um, I like to think there's hidden treasures in site search. And the reason for that is site search can give information, give you valuable information on um, content that or uh, products, anything that you sell on your website or information. Um, it'll give you insight into what they're looking for and if they're finding it or not. So if you're able to see, for example, uh, keywords that they're entering in your search box uh, and then see if they actually found what they were looking for by going to the pages that contain that content, uh, very valuable information. Really what you're looking for is uh, situations where they did not find what they're looking for. And then you can potentially refine your content strategy to provide what they were looking for or it may just be something that you, you don't want to make available on your website. But if you, are, if you don't already have site search set up in analytics, uh, just go to the profile settings page and you can get it set up there. And it is a little tricky to set up. Um, just read the instructions. I'm sure you'll figure it out. But it's very valuable and important to set up if you don't already have it set up. So I think most of this I just covered with the last slide. Uh, if your visitors are using search more often than not, you may need to make some improvements to your site. So um, one of the statistics you can see in site search is, how, is the percentage of visitors that, are, that use search versus the percentage that do not use search good information. If the, if, the percentage that, uh, if the percentage is very high that's using search, well then you're going to want to look at um, your site. You're going to look at your navigation. You want to look at your uh, internal linking strategy and figure out ways to make it faster and easier for your visitors to find what they're looking for. So study the pages most often searched from and look for ways to minimize the need to search. Uh, so one of the statistics you can see there is what particular page on your website are your visitors searching from most often? And if that particular page has a very high uh, search rate, then most likely that means that that page is not doing a very good job of making it easy for them to find what they're looking for, so they've got to search to find it. Okay, so goals, um, and we've talked a little about this already. Goals is Google Analytics term for conversions. And so just a quick uh, word on that graphic that you see there, uh, awareness, interest, desire, and action. So that's kind of what your content strategy should be for your website. You want to make your visitors aware of what you're trying to make them aware of. 
Uh, you want to generate interest of what you have to offer. You want to increase their desire to what you're offering and then encourage them to take action, which ultimately that reverts, uh, will result in a conversion. And typically we refer to conversions, or in many cases we refer to them as have, being in a conversion funnel where you'll start out with X number of people at the top of the funnel. By the time you get to the bottom where there's a conversion, uh, you're gonna, typically going to have fallout. And your goal is always to have the highest percentage of conversions that enter the, enter the funnel. So uh, funnel visualization, this is a pretty, this looks pretty complicated, but when you actually take a look at it in your Google Analytics, it'll make a lot more sense. But I just talked about the conversion funnel. This gives you the details as far as uh, how many people entered the funnel, how many left, uh, where they entered from, and where they left to. So you can see 2,553 people uh, started out at the shopping cart, and then all the way at the bottom. Um, check out complete 376. So everything in between is considered the funnel. And you're going to want to study that data and look for ways to increase uh, or decrease the number of visitors that fall out through the funnel process there. So how do you increase, in, how do you increase your conversions? You want to evaluate your visitors' movements throughout the site. Um, and so let's say, for example, you're trying to get them from point A to point B. Uh, and somewhere along the line, they, they veer off the path. So you're going to want to look for ways to, uh, to keep them on track, keep your content sim simple and obvious so that they, uh, they're heading down the path that you want them to take. Um, excuse me. Uh, pick out the visitor paths that don't convert as you had hoped for. So, so identify paths through the site that are not converting well and look for ways to improve um, those paths or eliminate them so that those paths don't exist and they are taking the path that you want your, your visitors to take. Uh, you can use tools like uh, third-party tools like Clicktail and Crazy Egg to identify conversion obstacles. So Clicktail is a neat tool. Uh, I won't spend too much time talking about it, but you, you've got to check it out. Just Google Clicktail. And basically the way it works is they, uh, their technology will actually make videos of your visitors' movements through your website. You can actually see what they click on, what they type into boxes. Uh, very, very valuable information, so I encourage you to check it out. And Crazy Egg has some good technology on heat mapping, which is identifying what your visitors looked at on your site um, and also what they clicked on and so forth. So your goal is going to be to... Um, eliminate the obstacles through the, through the paths on your website that ultimately result in a conversion. All right, Google Website Optimizer. Um, Google Website Optimizer is a way for you to test and measure the impact of changes to your website. So you've got a website, you're thinking about changing one of the pages on the website, or you're thinking that maybe a green button may work better than a blue button, but but you're afraid to actually put it out there and try it because um, you may end up losing sales or, or losing traffic as a result. So what Google Website Optimizer does, it gives you the ability to, to split test, or also, it's also called a do A-B testing, where you can have two unique pieces of content on your website, like, for example, two separate pages. And, you can, and what it does is it gives you the ability to uh, to run both pages or basically to display both pages to your visitors at the same time. And then what it does is it tracks the uh, conversion rate for the two different versions of the page. So uh, one of the, one of the uh, more important features of it is if you are concerned about your traffic or your conversions but you want to do the test, you can actually control what percentage of your visitors are going to see that experimental version of that piece of content. So you may only want 5% of your visitors to see that exper experimental version of that content, um, and that will minimize the impact on your business. And then there's another type of testing you can do called multivariant, and that's what I re was referring to when I said, uh, will a blue button work better than a red button? Multivariant is 
a particular object on a page versus the entire page. Um, so you can change a button look and feel or a, a graphic. Maybe a female graphic will work better than a male graphic, and you want to find out, so that's a great way to do that. So that wraps up my part of the webinar. I hope uh, you all enjoyed it and, and got some valuable information out of it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to James, and he's got some uh, information about some promotions uh, that we've got up and coming. So uh, James, go ahead and take over from here. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I appreciate thanks. you uh, logging in today. Thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, great presentation. Uh, so before we move on to the, the Q&A session, there are a few couple of uh, questions lined up here. I uh, first wanted to make you aware of a couple of promotions we're running at the moment. Uh, Firstly, for those who are also located in the Phoenix area and would like to know more about Google Analytics and what you can learn from your website visitors' actions, uh, WebShare Design are running a three-day seminar with lots of information available. You, you're going to learn uh, a huge amount. Um, and we've actually set up a deal in place uh, whereby for attending this webinar, you can have a 10% discount code when booking uh, to go on this seminar via their website, and the code is VM10 off. Uh, and we are also running a promotion of our own where you can win a Kindle just by visiting our website and completing a simple task. Uh, full details will be up on our blog on Monday morning, and it is a case of the first correct answer wins. So we do recommend that you subscribe to the RSS feed of our blog to gain an advantage in winning this great prize. Um, so now we'll open it up to any questions. A couple have come in as we've been doing the presentation, but if you have any more, please feel free to send them in in the box on, the, on, on your screen. Uh, I think the, the good one to start with is, uh, Chris, can you recommend uh, any ways of finding out which keywords aren't producing the best results? Well, as far as keywords not producing the best results, you're going to be able to see that in your keyword traffic, traffic report. Um, and it, you can actually just sort by the number of visits uh, in your analytics account. And so, of course, the ones that are not performing when you sort will be at the bottom of the list and, and not have any visitors. Um, so that information is, is readily available in your analytics. Just go to your keyword section and you can sort by the number of visits. And the follow-up question to that is, uh, when you say uh, focus or pay attention to those that uh, are not producing the, the best results, uh, do you mean kind of ignoring those and kind of moving away from that, or, or would you kind of focus on those terms uh, and try and increase the, the actual conversions coming from those terms? Sure. Um, and that's a really good question. So. Uh, one of the very first steps that you want to take um, in regards to looking at your website strategy is um, keyword research. Uh, you you want to go. You want to find the keywords that have the highest search volume that are related to your particular, uh, you know, your particular website or your business. So, for example, if you're selling uh, red widgets and you do keyword research, and red widgets has uh, 5,000 searches per month. Um, and, and but red widgets with a blue widget attached as 1,500 uh, v uh, searches done on a monthly basis. Well, you're going to want to focus on on the red widgets because that high, has the highest search volume. So you need to do your keywords research, um, pick the best keywords going in, and then really it all boils down to just optimizing your website for those keywords and the ever important link building. You've got to build links. Um, that match your keyword strategy. Right, exactly. And it's all about kind of the landing page that's going to be the, the most useful for each of those keywords. Um, so there's another question here. Uh, how would you find out kind of the, the length of time uh, on a site? So for example, uh, how would you know if all of your results are being skewed um, one way or the other? So for example, you might have a uh, a very good uh, average time on site, but how are you going to really find out a breakdown of whether it's one person has stayed a really long time or uh, a lot of people who are just kind of coming on the site and then bouncing off after only a few seconds? Right. Well, one of the reports that's available in analytics is, is called time on site. 
and it will display um, it will display averages or really groups of statistics as far as what's the what's the average time on site. But really, you don't want to be looking at you don't want to look at it from the perspective of what's the time on the entire site. Um, this is where you really got to kind of dig in and drill down and look a little deeper and kind of break your website apart and look at look at it page by page. So what pages have the highest or lowest time on site? Um, and really that's what you want to pay attention to. So the pages that have the lowest time on page, for example, most likely are not going to be your, your higher converting pages. So you want to look for ways to improve those pages and if, and further engage your visitors, you know, or the page, the goal of the page may be to transfer them to another page, and that page will result in the conversion activity. So, so you don't want to necessarily look at, look at it from the perspective of what's the entire site doing, um, you know, kind of break it down and, and get a little deeper and, and, and look at it piece by piece and work on it piece by piece. Right, and, and another, um report that I like to use. I like to use the, uh, the time on site report uh, in conjunction with the length of visit that can be found under the visitors and then you can really kind of see a breakdown of uh, the percentage of how long each visit was and kind of use the two together in combination. Uh, we have exactly. another question here. Uh, when I add the Google tracking code to my pages, does a Google ad or icon appear on my web pages? No, it doesn't. There's no indication that you have analytics installed, but you should be aware that if you view the source code on your page, um, you can see the, the tracking code in the source code. So it's kind of a common technique we use when we're working with our clients is if we want to know if they have Google Analytics installed, we just look at the HTML code and we can see if they have it in there or not. But there's nothing visible to your visitors that you have analytics installed. Okay, and we have another one around uh, website optimization. Uh, is there any software programs available to act like a spider and read your website to assure it's easily readable and relevant? A great way to see if site is relevant for Google searched keyword. Thank you. Do you know of any software like that, Chris? Um, well, one software I would recommend is one called Web CEO, um, which I've had experience with. And it's got a lot of great tools that you can use to optimize your site, your landing pages. Um, it'll help you with keyword research. Um, it even has uh, rank ranking, uh, you know, keyword tracking, so you can see how your keywords are ranking in the search engines, um, and really a bunch bunch of other features. But that's one piece of software I recommend, uh, and I, I'm sure there's others out there. But that's that's one in particular that I'm familiar with. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've also got a couple of uh, questions here asking if they're going to be able to download this presentation for reference later. Um, all of this material will be available on verticalmeasures.com slash webinars where you will be able to download it and keep it for uh, future reference. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time to answer all of the questions, so if you have any more that you would like us to answer, uh, you can, uh, of course, email us or t uh, contact us on Twitter. Uh, I am at James underscore Constable, and Chris, who has given the presentation, is at SEO for Vertical. So drop us a, a message or a question, and we'll get back to you with uh, a, a question uh, answer Sorry for you. Um, so I think that's all that we have time for today. It is now 9.30, but thank you very much for attending the presentation, and great job, Chris. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, start, James. Great uh, job. You could, uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe you can mark your calendar for the next uh, Vertical Measures webinar, which will be taking place on June 10th, and it will be on the subject of manual link building. So thanks, thanks a lot for attending our webinar again, and have a great day.